Emmanuel in the first year of his second term in office. Well, today we'll be playing host to a very delectable lady who has made it all, even in her academic career. I'm talking about Dr. Glory Emmanuel Edet. She is a graduate of uh, Agric Economics, an extension in her first degree, and also a second degree, that is master's degree, Agricultural Economics. And uh, she went as far as getting her PhD at the Michael Opara University, far away in Abia State, in uh, agri resources and environmental economics. That is to say, she has the qualification to occupy the different offices she has been occupying. When I return from the break, I'll be speaking with this intelligent woman who has seen agenda and child rights advocacy as a panacea of building a peaceful and a viral society. I'll be right back, don't go away. I am an Akwaibomite and I rise to the thread of greatness. Medakata. Akwaibom State, the pinnacle of peace, unity, and prosperity. Home of investors, piloted by His Excellency Governor Udom Emmanuel. Few years of fulfilled promises in the areas of industrialization, agriculture, and food security, free and compulsory education. Free healthcare delivery to the young ones and the elderly, infrastructural transformation and human capacity development, youth and sport, transport and tourism. Come and be part of the completion agenda. I like Governor Dom Emmanuel and I love what he's doing in a private state. We've never had it so good. Only God. <laughs> Welcome back. The most important aspect of human existence is the ability for you to create an enabling environment for the other person. And today's edition of Media Chart is how we can create a better environment for other people. My guest in this edition is none other than the horrible combination of women affairs and agriculture. And I'll be taking her first on the issue of women are faced, but I would want her to take control of human affairs because it's very important. She has been an advocate of child rights, and you know what that means. And, uh, of recent, she has won up to 10 cases when it has to do with raping and so on and so forth. And so we'll just be talking about the ability of His Excellency to transmit his policies on a disciplined society through this lady. Yes. Honorable Commissioner for Women Affairs and Agriculture, and uh, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you. You look extremely beautiful. You got it, love. Thank you, ma. Yes, let's start this way. Women are fair. When people say women are fair, there's this palette that women should be in the kitchen. And when you say women are fair, is it how they take care of the home or the society? What does it entail? for a good woman in a particular society. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God for women and I want to thank him for making me a woman. I'm one of the persons that is uh, proud of uh, being a woman because uh, I believe God did not make any mistake to create women as women. And of course, to also uh, create the men uh, who they are. Uh, when we talk of uh, women issues, we are not just talking of uh, staying in the kitchen. Uh, gone are the days that uh, uh, people used to say that uh, women are supposed to be in the kitchen 24 hours. Uh, even though we have our responsibilities and roles to play in the kitchen, 
uh, but uh, women affairs uh, is concerned with so many things the way we bring up the children uh, the way we you know teach our children in the homes the way we even behave in the office or anywhere that uh, we we find ourselves uh, for instance if a child is born the child spends most of his or her time with the mother and you know the teaching of the woman in the home matters a lot not that our men are lazy not that our men wouldn't uh, want to take care of the children or the babies but uh, it's the way god has created it so a woman is very important because whatever you, you you tell your children whatever you train your baby it may impact the children throughout his or her lifetime so women are important because uh, we are the first teachers we are the first to train our children and secondly I, I don't think any society can survive without the women because uh, women are peacemakers anywhere we find ourselves true women I'm talking about we are the peacemakers we mediate you know if there are issues that's a motherly way that God has created us to be we make sure that um, there is peace wherever we are and apart from that I think uh, there is no position or no place that a woman cannot occupy provided it is God's time for that woman and that is why when we say gender sensitive we are not competing with the men far be it we are only trying to display our potentials to work with the men and so on and in a quite warm state of course uh, his excellency the governor mr don gabriel Mandel, has done a lot for the women he has appointed the women and women are in many uh, elective positions and by god's grace the women are doing uh, what we are supposed uh, to do and generally in terms of uh, all this child abuse and so on you know if the women speak out the world will know that uh, uh, something is happening is happening because whenever a woman is not happy the society cannot be stable and that is why women are very important and not only in the kitchen of course in the home in the kitchen we also play roles because i've been telling women irrespective of the position God has given to you, you must do your responsibilities. You don't need to tell a maybe house girl, a house boy to cook for your husband or, you know, anybody that lives with you. You have to do what you are supposed to do. You are not too big to do your major responsibilities. Okay. Uh, that's a very important one. And uh, uh, my producer was nodding his head because he knows that... Uh, Woman must cook for the husband. Uh, Madam, let's get to something very spectacular. You have served in two administrations. And um, somebody will say, is it only Dr. Blurry that what is very special about you that everybody would want to work with you? Yeah, uh, naturally I would have loved people to say what is special about me because uh, you don't make your own noise. You allow people to, you know, look at you, assess you, uh, but since uh, you've asked me, I want to say first thing that I believe has made me to succeed is God Almighty. And, you know, I believe it was meant to be so, because the Bible says that uh, God is the only one that knows the end from the beginning, meaning that God knew even when I was born, that at a time like this, uh, you know, I will be a commissioner, I will serve with the uh, two uh, uh, administration and apart from that the grace of God I believe that everything I'm able to do is because God has given me the grace it's not from me and secondly I believe in commitment whenever you find yourself whatever you're actually you have to be committed because when you are committed you will do that work as your own work I've been telling people if you if you want your staff to be coming to offices. You as a leader, you must come to the office. And in the agri sector, you don't just sit in the office. You have to move around, go and see things for yourself. Because I don't believe in um, doing agriculture, in only the theory aspect. You have to do the practical. It's more of the practical aspect. So you have to also be disciplined. People uh, you know, are always confused between uh, pride and discipline. There are two different things. You can humble yourself, but you are still disciplined. So I believe in discipline. We can play, we can joke, but I don't joke with my official responsibilities. And of course, 
one has to be, uh, you know, submissive to the authority. If you want others to respect you, to listen to you, you must respect constituted authority. I've worked in these two administrations by God's grace. I respect constituted authority because uh, after God is government. And apart from that, uh, I also believe in humility. Humility. You have to humble yourself. If you don't humble yourself, uh, people will not even be able to come and tell you their problems. Working with the women affairs sector, I, I believe that um, if you humble yourself, move around the women, know that you are not better than those women or even other men. It's just a privilege. When you humble yourself, you listen to people. And if need be, if there is anything you need to correct yourself, you correct yourself. You don't feel because you're a commissioner, uh, no one should come near you and so on. And in the social welfare aspect, we have people that are so dear to God's heart, like persons with disabilities, uh, widows, uh, socially disadvantaged persons. You have to carry all of them along. I think with all this, uh, God is helping us. Okay, uh, let's get to these before we go on a short break. Let's get to one aspect that everybody would want me to ask you. You are surrounded by the less privileged. The widows, uh, I heard you mention widows, no widower. I know you're working with widows. Of course, as well. with the widowers. <laughs> <laughs> you're also working, uh, you know, to transfer or to, you know, transform the less privileged. And uh, what has been the most challenging moment with all this responsibility in your life? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the most uh, challenging moments, I would say. Uh, you know, when you look at, uh, when we are going out to evacuate lunatics, for instance, uh, at the point of evacuation, you wouldn't know where they come from because uh, the language they will speak, they are the only ones that understand. So when we pick them, you know, sometimes to even pick them is difficult. And when we pick them to this hospital and after everything, treating them, to trace their parents, to trace their family members. Sometimes we take them to another state through the Ministry of Women Affairs and reintegrate them back with the families. So I, I think uh, that is uh, one of the, 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 the things I've been, you know, worried because uh, if other state governments are doing like government, don't even know this is not even state government, things will be better. Because after the treatment of these lunatics, we discover that over 80 percent are not even from Akwaibom State. Some will even bring their their, their mad people to dorm in Akwaibom State when they hear that the government is taking care of uh, lunatics, treating them and um, rehabilitating them. And of course, another thing I would love to say: when we go out to other states and so on, and even uh, some areas, we go out to, to to preach to the less privileged, to evacuate them, to ask them so many things and you discover these children sometimes are brought to the to, 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 to the outside by their either stepmothers or stepfathers and it's been a problem because there is no child you see on the streets that was not born by someone so i've been appealing to parents whether it's your stepdaughter whether it's your stepson if you love the man you are marrying you must love all his children and make sure that you you, you take good care of the children so that they may not come out again to be like abandoned children in quotes. Okay. When we return from the break, but I want to leave her thinking, what has been those cardinal factors, those agendas of His Excellency towards women development in Aquaibom states? Because uh, it's not enough to occupy the office. The women must tap from the goodies of that office. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Portrait of Achievement by Governor Udumbi Manuel in the area of industrialization. He started with toothpick manufacturing factory, pencil factory, a cork pen factory that was abandoned for several years and he revamped it within 100 days in office. Plywood and timber factory, block factory, matron solution factory, syringe factory, flour mill factory, fertilizer blending factory, coconut refinery, rice mill factory, plastic manufacturing factory, aviation industry and the establishment of Ibom Air. Aqua Prime Hatchery, Cassava Processing Factory, Starch Processing Factory and more are still coming. 
Come, live, walk, and invest in Akwaibom. Only God, powered by the Minister of Information, Akwaibom Steve. Welcome back. Yes, the most cardinal aspect of it has been the advantages of this very important ministry. Uh, yes, madam, what has been the blueprint of government towards women? Uh, because your responsibility seems to be very enormous. It doesn't really have to do with affairs, not just women, but the affairs of women. And you know, it, it, uh, so married men will tell you that women need so much money, women need so much attention, women need so much also love. Good managers. Yes. Women are good managers. What is the government doing for them? Uh, because I'm aware at the time you were giving out loans to women for farming and so on and so forth. In a year, in the second term of His Excellency, what can you beat your chest to say, come on, this is what I've done for women through His Excellency? Thank you very much. Uh, let me still uh, commend His Excellency, the gender friendly governor for the many things he has done for the women of Akwa Ibom states and even beyond. Beyond in the sense that even those who are not from Akwa Ibom that are women and are still in Akwa Ibom states, he still uh, takes care of them. Uh, in this second tenure of His Excellency the Governor, uh, we have done uh, retreats, let me start by that, for women. Because we believe you have to add value to your lives and we have uh, women leaders that when we train them, we go back to train others and we've done uh, many retreats for them to sensitize them on so many things, the roles of uh, women, how they can, you know, uh, make the society to be comfortable for everybody. And apart from the women, we've also done uh, retreats for the royal mothers. The royal mothers here are wives of paramount rulers because they're very important. There is no local government here without a paramount ruler, and of course, the wife is also, you know, a big woman in any local government here. So we've done training for them, and even wives of uh, clan heads, wives of uh, village heads, and wives of family heads. We call all of them royal women, uh, because uh, we we needed to also educate them on so many things, like the child's right law we are implementing. That if cases are brought to them, that they should forward it to the state. When we have issues that concern the child's right law, child abuse, child trafficking, and so on, there is no sentiment at all. So we educate them so that they, they, they won't handle so many cases that they are not supposed to handle them so that we can deal with the matters accordingly. And apart from that, His Excellency the Governor has given grants to so many women to start up businesses and to also expand existing ones for those ones that, that started before. Because uh, the governor does not only give the women uh, fish, he also teaches the women how to fish. And you know, with this money, the startup businesses, the, their poverty level has really, really reduced. And of course, if you want a woman to concentrate, to like any government, to appreciate any government, you have to, you know, make the woman busy. Let the woman have a work to do. Because when a woman has work to do, she will take care of the children, she will take care of uh, the family and so on. And apart from the women generally, His Excellency the Governor has done a lot for widows. We have empowered over 3,000 widows in the state uh, through this ministry. Given the widows, we have what we call widows empowerment scheme, where we give uh, money to widows. We have their data here and grants we give to them to have something to do because if a man dies the children all the children is the woman that will take care of the children and without anything for the woman you discover that some of these women are real housewives so you know they did nothing before the husband uh, uh, died so the governor has done a lot by giving them grants and apart from the grant is given to widows through this ministry through the widows empowerment scheme he also organizes a, a program that he, in quotes, as Mr. Udomi Mandel, empowers widows across the 31 local government areas with 200,000 naira each. 
and these widows we pick them across the local government areas because we have the poorest of the poor widows all the widows are not the same we have rich widows we have uh, uh, poor widows so we pick the poor widows and the less privileged he has done well in, in that capacity and apart from all this in this ministry we have a gender-based violence center where we take care of uh, you know all the women with issues gender-based uh, violence uh, issues uh, for instance uh, if a, a, a man dies now the family may say oh the woman you are the one that killed the man come and swear come and do this thing sometimes they beat up the woman uh, mercilessly those things are not tolerated anymore so when it happens like that we invite the women and of course sometimes we all give them support take care of them and so on and one of the things that the governor has really done because if the governor uh, does something to affect children indirectly is helping the mothers in this state we have uh, five government homes that we take care of over 800 children orphans and less privileged and we have about 25 of them in higher institutions uh, reading so many courses one of them uh, red law was called to bar last december Presently, she's doing her youth service. We have another one that uh, is doing youth service. She read uh, uh, electrical, electronics, engineering. We have so many of them sponsored by His Excellency the Governor. And there are other less privileges, uh, people that he's taking care of, paying their school fees, and so on. That has also directly and indirectly helped the mother and reduce poverty in the society. And apart from all this, you know, uh, this ministry, we are also in charge of non-governmental organizations. We have a lot of them registered with us. Those ones that are real organizations verified. And His Excellency, through this ministry, has been giving grants to the different groups so that they can also uh, continue with their businesses. And recently, uh, what has never happened in the States uh, vegetable farmers were not really recognized, whereas they are very important because uh, of the importance of vegetables and I don't think there's anybody who doesn't eat a vegetable. And His Excellency the Governor has uh, given interest, uh, free loan to over 2,000 vegetable farmers and they are very happy with them. In this case, men were also involved, but of course, you know, in vegetable production, uh, women, women are the majority, but the loan was also given to the men. Even the maize farmers that he has given to both men and women, of course, women also benefited. So His Excellency has done a lot for the women of Hawaii Home State. And I have to say this, this is the only state that we have so many female appointees. I have to really appreciate His Excellency the Governor on behalf of all the female political appointees. We are really, really grateful. You, you go to the local government level, we have two women that are chairman of local government areas. Uh, we, we have over uh, uh, 60 female supervisors at the local government area. I don't think there is any state that has done that in this country. We go to female councillors, we have over 45 of them. And of course, there is hardly a board in the state that you can go without a woman. Some of them are even the chairpersons in charge of those boards. So we are grateful to His Excellency, the Governor, for all what he has done for the women. And of course, the widows. He's been empowering the widows, the Nigerian Legion widows, and other widows. He has done well for the women generally. Your responsibility requires a whole lot of discipline. What would you say to those who say you're very difficult? Yeah, uh, if anybody says um, difficult, I will think the person does not really you know You refuse to play alone. The, the person really don't know who I am or does not understand me. I one thing about me by the special grace of God, I'm a very simple person. By God's grace, I'm, I should say I'm a humble person, but highly disciplined. Discipline in the sense that I, I think um, I don't need to, to, to take a bribe or to get money before I do anything for you. No, I don't need to do it. Even when I was in the university, I've been telling people, when you go to my department, they will let you know. I don't believe that a lecturer that I was, or of course I'm on leave of absence, or a commissioner should request 
any bribe directly or indirectly before you can do anything. So I, so if you come to me and request for something that I know is not possible, you are not qualified. I will tell you, I don't believe in, a, uh, you know, calling black, white, or you know, confusing you. Yes. I will tell you straight, and I will encourage you and and you know, advise you on what to do. And apart from that, you know. As a mother, when you are dealing with people, if they do the wrong thing, you don't need to keep quiet. Yeah. Because the Bible says, don't spoil the child and spare the rod. It's better you tell the person what he has done. Like dealing with all these children, there is no way uh, you'll be a good mother and your children will do something that is bad and you keep don't quiet. Discipline. No, we discipline. Just like in the areas of child abuse and so on. I was coming to that honorable commissioner, sorry, let me butt in here. Sex for bread seems to be another responsibility you're saddling with. Sex for bread in higher institutions. Is there any responsibility your department is playing? Yeah, uh, we, we've been having meetings with uh, female students in higher institutions. You know, like Kwa Ibon said, we have many higher institutions, the University of Rio, Kwa Ibon State University, School of Nursing, and so on, polytechnics, colleges of education, and so on. We've been having meetings and seminars for them to also encourage them, to also advise them. As a woman, by God's grace, who is a lecturer by profession, I will encourage them. There are certain things that we also advise female students not to do. For instance, the way you dress is very important because when you dress and expose yourself, everything inside your body that men are not supposed to see outside, what are you telling people? You are telling them you are available. So we also talk to them. In as much as we condemn in totality any man, any lecturer who may want to uh, sell a, a, a great or wants to have uh, sex with a female a student before, we condemn it. And if it is reported to us, we don't spare anybody. But at the same time, we advise our students, you know the type of, of dress you put on. Because the way you dress, that is the same way you will be addressed. And secondly, there is no way you will read your books, submit your assignments on time, and the lecturer will fail. You have the right to tell the person, oh, this is not my grade. Go and look at it again. But if you did not read, you did not write, you will not be bold to do that. You submit your assignments when others are submitting. Not when everybody has submitted assignments, you now go alone and say, sir, anything. That anything means a lot. I'm a lecturer, even when I was a lecturer by God's grace, I've been the staff advisor for students for seven years. I've been a, a matron in the female hostel in the University of Rio. So I, I, whatever I tell them is real. In fact, there was a time I was telling some students, sometimes you go and tell people, oh, this man wanted me to sleep with him. Me, I'm a woman, what would you say? So you have to discipline yourself. Lecturers are also human beings. When you know you are, you are a serious student, the day they don't see you in the class, they will ask after you. So I think it's both ways. We should be disciplined and I can say authoritatively there is no serious student that the lecturer will victimize and you don't say something. It's not possible. Well, it's not possible. You listen to her. As a, she's a commissioner. She has been to university. She's a lecturer. She's almost everything that anybody can think of. Look at how she dressed. She covered everywhere. So you just started and you want to flounge your sleeves, limpy tops and the rest of them. Just be disciplined as she is telling us. The other segment, we'll be talking about agriculture, which is very important. And uh, being Margaret Thatcher, she'll tell us what she's doing in that direction. And also find out from her, because uh, she's been talking about interest-free loan, interest-free loan. How are we going to use agriculture to diversify the economy of our five home states? Such, like His Excellency normally said, will become self-sustaining. We have food sufficiency and food security. Well, I'm aware that through the supervision of his, uh, his ministry, Nagrik, there's a whole lot of rice meal, gary processing, fufu processing, and so on and so forth. When I return from it, we'll be talking with her in that department. Don't go away.
our Kwaibom people, another planting season is here again. Oh yes, nature has so endowed our state with fertile land and sufficient rain for bountiful harvest. For this reason, Akwaibom State Government, under the visionary leadership of His Excellency Mr. Dom Gabriel Emmanuel, has set the template and encouraged all civil servants, businessmen and women, the youths residing in the rural communities and urban areas to return to the age-long practice of farming to ensure food sufficiency for local consumption and export. Good people of Akwaibom State, let's heed the call and cultivate what we eat. Cassava, vegetables, tubers, and even economic crops like cocoa, oil palm, and every other crop that thrives in our rich soil. Let's join hands with government to strengthen our economy through agriculture. Come, let's go back to farming. This message is brought to you by Dr. Gloria Det, Honorable Commissioner for Agriculture and Women Affairs at Waibum State. Welcome back. Well, the, you know, normally in an interview like this, you just have to make sure that everything is brought up to speed for people to understand exactly what His Excellency is doing through this department. And so before I get to the next question of agriculture, which is very important, the penalty of food security and so on and so forth, we are to the economy as the dwindling oil prices continue. Uh, Madam, let's get to some of the aspects. The human angle of the governor through your ministry the Nigerian Legion, uh, sometimes you see them, uh, you know, normally in the 27th May, like now, they're supposed to go, they march past with a whole lot of stuff. What are we really doing about them? Uh, like uh, missing children, sometimes you see on radio, I know most times your department will be putting that on TV and radio for whatever happens. And then picking people on the road and then evacuating them, the, you know, so on and so forth. Tell us exactly. What's the government blueprint in this angle? Uh, thank you very much, uh, His Excellency, the Governor of Akwaibom State, Ms. Don Gabriel Emmanuel, and this government has done a lot uh, in the social welfare aspect through this ministry. The Nigerian Legion uh, is under us, and of course, we have uh, a lot of them across the 31 local government areas. And His Excellency has been um, you know, empowering them through this ministry, and that is why the the, the ministry uh, organizes the Armed Forces Remembrance Day on behalf of the state government, and we meet with them from time to time and empower them. I mean, the main Nigerian Legion. I think uh, in the whole country, Akwaibom State is the number one state that has really paid attention to the Nigerian Legion in this country, and. We also have the Nigerian Legion with us. Some of them, before their husbands died, uh, they, they were just housewives. And through this ministry, His Excellency, the governor has been empowering them. That, like the loan that we gave to farmers, we had also given them the uh, interest-free loan. Sometimes we also give them grants and financial support. That times we even buy things and give to them so that they can take care of the children because there are some families that have up to five six seven children without a man in the house so this government has done a lot to impact you know in the lives of the woman and the children uh, and apart from all the all these ones you know um from time to time we have a prayers with them and a, a quite state government is the only state that sent 155 uh, widows to Israel on pilgrimage and the Nigerian Legion widows were also carried along. They went to Israel to pray and that is why when God blesses Governor Don Emmanuel, uh, people don't know the secret. The secret is God, this only God and he has a backup with action by doing those things that are dear to God's heart because these are women, these are widows that are so dear to God's heart. And in the area of um, you know, uh, abandonment of children and so on. Uh, let me sincerely uh, appreciate the governor for implementing the child's right law in the state. Uh, recently, when we went to National Council on Women Affairs in Akure, Undo State, His Excellency Mr. Udon Gabriel Emmanuel was the only governor that was awarded the best implementing child's rights governor in the country. 
because of all the things he has done. Uh, presently, we have jailed about 25 people uh, uh, of those who abuse or rape our children. Because when it comes to that, no sentiment at all. And in this way, we are collaborating with the Minister of Justice and Akwaibom State Judiciary. So we have done that. And I want to also appreciate the fee that the female lawyers, they've done a lot. We have a family court in the state. And all these cases, most of them are handled in the family court. And I want to thank His Excellency because it's not all the states that have a family court. And I want to, you know, thank him because he too is not happy about any man that rapes a, a child or so on. You discover that even these days, a, a man of 60 years may go and rape a girl of four years and so on. So no matter what happened, we can, this is one of the areas that will say maybe the commissioner is very strict because when it comes to that, when you rape any child, irrespective of who you are, you must face the law because no one is above the law. We monitor the cases to the end. We have social welfare officers that go to the courts every day and report to us. Have you handled a case that has to do with uh, law enforcement officer? For instance, there was a case I'm told that uh, you didn't give a damn what, who was involved. Yeah, anything. If no, that's what I'm saying. No matter what happens, there are cases that we have. Uh, even people in, a, you know, some of these, uh, you know, personnel we are talking about. If they're involved, it doesn't matter. We charge you the court because you are not above the law. There was a case that someone uh, was caught in Lagos that, uh, you know, uh, took one of our children away. We charge the person to court. So we do this because of the implementation of the law. That's why I'm grateful to the governor. Because if the law is not implemented in a quiet boom state, maybe some of these things we will not be able to address them. And children, when we see children outside, we pick them, we reunite them back with their families. Presently, we have reunited over 80 uh, children with their families. There are some cases that people will call us outside the state. We are seeing someone from a quiet home state, and we will tell the person, bring the, the, the children to us, and we reintegrate uh, them back with their families. All this won't have been possible without the assistance of His Excellency, the Governor. So we have done well. Like the Children's Parliament, we also use this Children's Parliament because of the mouthpiece of the children to talk you know, to our children. If they see any form of child abuse, they tell us. And of course, we don't expose the children in terms of all these rape cases. That's why you, you won't see us uh, mentioning the children's name is against the law because we need to protect the children against the future. But for the man, we expose you. So sometimes we give them our numbers, they call us. You don't need to know who gave us the number. We just come to your house. We, we have uh, uh, so many teams that move uh, across the three senatorial district so we do this sometimes you see someone that will use a hot iron and place at uh, you know a, a place on someone's back a child that is no discipline again that one becomes child abuse. abuse when children are in school let whether the person is your child or not let the person be in school if not it's against the law and we will deal with you squarely well it's against the law and it's also for you to know that it's against the law for you not to plant. This is a planting season. And you listen to the commissioner right there. Yes, ma uh, let's switch to this other aspect, your new responsibility, agriculture. I, 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 I was going through your profile. I got to know that you are disciplined in agriculture and economics. And, uh, you know, and uh, it goes to show that His Excellency actually searched for those with the capacity to work with. Um, being, I must say, being the first woman or female uh, commissioner for uh, agriculture, uh, I mean, and also uh, the first to occupy that office in the second term of His Excellency, what are the indices, what do you put in place to make sure that we have food, and food in abundance, considering the five points agenda of His Excellency, food sufficiency, and food security. How, I mean, tell us, what are those things in place so that people listening to you will get up and walk? 
Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, when the governor used to tell us from 215 that he took up the mantle, he used to tell everybody, you must farm, you must farm. We didn't know that uh, he was prophesying. He, he, nobody knew that there would be COVID-19 or post-COVID-19 or anything. But I know since the time His Excellency the Governor took over the mantle, he was shouting, he was preaching the gospel of farming. And all of us, we have seen the reason. Uh, that is why uh, when someone is a leader, when he tells you to do something, you have to do it, knowing that he's led by the Spirit. In the agric sector, the governor has done so many things. For instance, in order to increase food production in the state and to make us have, uh, you know, our food, uh, enough food all year round, he emphasized on the second planting season. Uh, before now, many people were only concentrating on first planting season after February, March, April, they go and relax. No. Last year, His Excellency the Governor was, uh, was in person to flag off the second season planting, which has really helped. And we encourage people to do that all year round. And not just flagging off the second planting season. He's an action governor. Whatever he does, he backs up with action. He provided cassava cuttings, inputs, uh, seeds, uh, okra seeds, maize seeds, so many inputs to, uh, to farmers free of charge. And that alone will increase their food production. Because when we talk about agriculture, the output depends on the input. If you want to have good yield, you have to make sure that you are using the improved varieties. And this is what the government has been providing to the people of Akwa Ibom State. And during this uh, pandemic, of course, all the rice, the flour, everything that we distributed to people across the 31 local government areas are produced in Akwa Ibom State. We have um, a, a rice processing mills in Akwa Ibom State, and the rice farmers, we are encouraging them to farm. Last three weeks, the government distributed improved varieties of seeds for rice farmers to raise their nursery and that will increase the the, the food production next year uh you know this is one of the things that make the farmers to be happy yes. so that is in the rice aspect so that the meals we are having we are not only having rice meal in one location we have about four locations now so when the people they harvest their their their, their rice they see way to produce and way to process yeah. it will really help and apart from rice in the vegetable sector uh, before now people used to travel from a quiet state to other states to buy vegetables like cucumber like tomatoes and so on but now People from other states are coming to Okwai State to buy tomatoes, to buy coffee bags, and so on. If you go to the greenhouses uh, along uh, oh, His Excellency uh, Victor Ota International Airport, you'll see the greenhouses that are, are owned by the government of Okwai Ibom State. Um, the Ministry of Agriculture, we are, we are doing a lot there and is a continuous thing. We keep on planting so that whether it is off season or the main season, we don't lack vegetables. These are some of the things we are doing. And we are encouraging farmers across the state to make sure they cultivate uh, tomatoes because in future, by God's grace, if we have processing meal for these tomatoes, it will really help us, which is one of the things that is excellent the governor is planning to do. And outside the vegetables uh, uh, sector, the, the governor of Akwa Ibom State uh, bought 10 tractors to farmers. And these 10 tractors we are using to move around to clear the land because in production, land clearing is the number one thing that is difficult, especially for peasant farmers. So what the government is doing is to use this tractor, the tractor operators go to the different local government areas and clear the land and has really assisted our people. And we have given interest-free loan to cassava farmers. Presently, over 2,000 cassava farmers. The government has also given interest-free loan to maize farmers. The government has also given interest-free loan, as I said earlier, to vegetable farmers. So all these interest-free loans, I think I can say authoritatively, especially during this uh, planting season and pandemic, Akwa Ibom State is the only state that the government has given 
interest free loans to cassava farmers, maize farmers, and vegetable farmers. And this will help a lot to increase their food production. And in the cocoa sector, in the States, God has blessed us with fertile soil. And we have the best quality of cocoa in this part of the world. And, you know, to promote cocoa production in the States, we've been uh, giving an uh, input to cocoa farmers recently. We gave uh, agrochemicals, knapsack, uh, sprayers, and so on to cocoa farmers. And in two weeks' time, we are distributing over 2,000 seedlings, cocoa seedlings to farmers, the government, free of charge. And we'll also add with agrochemicals and, you know, other inputs so that it will really help them. So the government has done a lot in the agric sector. We have a coconut uh, refinery, the best in this part of the world. And this coconut uh, refinery is about 95% uh, completion. The, the, the government thought so well because uh, when you have any, any industry, you must think of the, the raw materials for the industry and that is why in this country we are the number one state that is known for coconut production. We have the, the coconut plantation that will be able to feed that coconut refinery. We've cultivated over 2,000 hectares of cocoa, coconuts that will use to feed this thing. And we are also encouraging other farmers to produce, uh, to, to cultivate uh, coconut because uh, we don't want a situation where others say we know others say will be coming to process their coconut here because they don't have any option but we also encourage other farmers in order to sustain this uh, agricultural development to also on their own apart from the one that government is doing cultivate that's why recently uh, we had a meeting with all the principals and all the the agri teachers in all the public yes schools. i was about asking you that one if uh, you're going to reinstitute the school farming system because when i was in secondary school we used to farm yeah in primary very, school we used to yeah, farm but from primary school is very important I, I don't know what's going on now yeah that was one of the things we discussed with them because when you start from the primary school you are even encouraging the children to to have interest in agriculture yes. and we, we, we when we talk of practical agriculture you start from that that point a child should know how to plant cassava a child should know how to plant maize and so on so that is why this coconuts we 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 had that meeting with all agri teachers in public schools and principals so that we will distribute the government will give them free coconut seedlings improve their rights then they will plant in all the schools that will also help because the children will be the ones to plant and will send you know our technical persons to go and assist them so these are some of the things we are doing and presently we are obtaining data we want to update our data of farmers in the state is going on uh, across the 31 local governments simultaneously now we are sending our enumerators with the uh, agri uh, investment committee and a technical uh, committee on food sufficiency to make sure that we update the data bank of farmers to know the different kinds of farmers we are having because recently like the rural area we are going to go in there to make sure we talk to our fish farmers so that we, we, we organize them, we know whatever what we are producing here. Like the cocoa that we are having, the person that is managing the, the, the cocoa uh, fermentation center. Because in order to add value, and because of this value chain, the, the government has uh, built a cocoa fermentation and drying center for the cocoa farmers wow. and was commissioned about a few months, two, three months ago. And in that place, we also uh, produce uh, soap. We use the cocoa pot to produce uh, soap, which is uh, very good, and the cocoa farmers they really appreciate this. Okay, madam, uh, maybe you don't want to tell us now, uh, but I, I, even that every Apibomite home and abroad would want to know uh, is that something made mention of the fact that uh, your ministry is working on something? I think farmers' uh, loan, uh, uh, farmers' bank. Bank. Uh, I should call that farmers bank for farmers where they can go there, yeah. uh, open the account, do their service, also take loan. And so how soon is this going to be possible? 
Yeah, very, very soon. Presently, we have gone far. We've got an approval for that uh, with the CBN. And even at the Executive Council, it was approved. Uh, interviews were conducted. And, you know, the qualified persons were selected at the, you know, the, the highest level. So what we are doing now, we are, you know, a few weeks from now, uh, by God's grace, the bank will be open because uh, we are we are furnishing the offices of the, the staff. So everything is in place. And I want to appreciate His Excellency for this. The bank will not only serve the farmers. I know it will help the farmers. It will, call, it will be called a uh, Ibom Fadama Microfinance Bank. But other people will still go there. Of course, that is why we are encouraging everybody to become a farmer. Whether you are working for government or not, own your own farm. Well, wherever you are, from uh, being a student, you just have to own a farm. Be a worker, civil servant, or any corporate organization, you've just got to have a farm. Like me, I have a farm, you know, behind my house. And uh, so no can witness that, because uh, I need to just get something, you know, very fresh. Like the Honorable Commissioner has said, she looked fresh, that she eat fresh. When I return from the break, we were looking at a very important aspect, uh, the issue of yam band. When we grew up, we used to see yam band. How do we contend this? And again, don't run away from coco yam. I'll be asking the Commissioner, is it true that it is medicinal? Uh, because uh, there could be a lot of extract from these, who knows, we are talking about uh, vaccine for this, vaccine for that. Some of these farm produce could turn out to be a source of this vaccine. Don't go away, I'll be right back with the Honorable Commissioner. And of course from there we'll be doing uh, closing ceremonies and she'll be talking about the 29th May that is coming up. I'll be right back. Nature has blessed us with fatal and arable land, with enough rainfall so we can plant all year round. Let us grow what we eat and produce what we consume. Our economy will be stronger and a sustainable future of ourselves and our children will be consolidated. Let us join hands and support the efforts of Governor Udemi Manuel led administration in ensuring food sufficiency in Akwaibu states. Let us begin to farm again. Commissioner has put light through a lot of issues and now I want us to look at preservations because the yam band very important so that when next planting season comes you can readily have it to plant and the yes said that His Excellency has supported the farmers in terms of uh, uh, you know giving you uh, fertilizers giving you money you know uh, interest-free loan for you to have interest-free loan hey I remember the last administration about um, 5,000 youths were trained, and you come back, you were given 500,000. Some of you used that money to buy a vehicle, to come buy a vehicle. Some of you used the money to go and marry. Please, this time around, don't misuse this opportunity. The pandemic has caused a whole lot of crashes in the economy. So you could be the next Dangote. I'm serious about this. Yes, Honorable Commissioner, you raised a very important issue, uh, improved siblings. And also mention of the fact that um, farmers are now given a pride of place. Everybody will be looking up to farmers. And His Excellency, in his wisdom, has established a, a coconut refinery. And uh, that goes to show that we may not be depending so much on oil, crude oil, I mean. Uh, tell me, uh, preservation seems to be a very big problem in this part of the world. What are you putting in place? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, one of the things uh, we are we are planning to do is to have uh, like warehouses across the central district, whereby when we harvest this thing, 
we will now preserve it against uh, subsequent times. For instance, like the rice we are producing, we are processing and so on, we need to package and have a warehouse. And we are even encouraging all local government chairmen to have warehouses where we can uh, we can put our, our, our food, like a food bank okay. for local government areas and so on. And as I said earlier, we are encouraging our farmers to plant more like the vegetables so that we can now have uh, you know, processing meals and so on where we can do the proper packaging and preserve them. We have so many things in our people that we need to preserve, especially the perishable ones, like tomatoes, vegetables are classified as the uh, perishable, perishable things. So, uh, when we do this and have the processing meals, we can process and package our product very well and preserve them. Like the cocoa fermentation center has really helped that the government has done because we also have a warehouse there. And when the farmers, cocoa farmers, uh, ferment their cocoa, dry them, they are put in that warehouse. And even those people that want to buy, they buy from there, meaning that even if they finish drying and they don't want to sell immediately, they can keep in that warehouse. And that warehouse is given to them free of charge. They can present them. And we also insist that our cocoa, the name of our state must be on the back. And, you know, our symbol, of course, the Dakada symbol. The last time that the investors uh, took it to the market, that was what we insisted. And, of course, uh, we are also encouraging farmers, as you said, uh, these uh, commercial farmers, they should think of preserving their products, not consuming everything or selling everything. As you rightly said, there, there were times when I was in primary school, secondary school, that our grandfathers, they used to have yam band where they can keep that yam, even if it's one year. If they want to give it to each, they go and look at it, maybe pick one. They have a section, they will say this one, it's for consumption. One, this one is for consumption. Planting. This for for selling in the market. This is for planting against yes. the even maize. Our mothers and our grandmothers, if you go to their kitchen, you'll see some section they will put maize. They will say, don't touch that one. Yes. That one is for planting Beautiful. next season. And we are encouraging our farmers to do the same thing. So that we don't look for improved seedlings, seedlings every time. Like the cassava cutting that the government gave to them, we are encouraging them. When you get cuttings to plant, for instance, two hectares, you should be able to produce cuttings to plant for maybe seven hectares in subsequent years. So that uh, even if far be it, there is a time that we cannot even go out and see all the things, we'll make sure that whatever we are using, we have them more than enough. Uh, we are encouraging our uh, uh, palm oil farmers and you know presently uh, I had a meeting with some of them few months ago and no ways of uh, encouraging them what we are planning to do by God's grace is for us to maybe do what we call out grower scheme that the state governments will provide them with seedlings. Uh, recently we distributed free seedlings to all of them free of charge because one of the things that the government does to encourage them is to normally give them free seedlings. Because some people may be interested in planting, but they don't know where to get the seedlings, they don't have the seedlings. So we provided them with seedlings and fertilizers, and we are also planning to do out grower scheme for them so that we can have a lot of people. We don't want only the people that are known for uh, particular crops to only be farmers. For instance, if we, if we know these are major cocoa farmers, these are major, uh, all uh, uh, farmers, we are supposed to encourage others, to introduce others to the system. And when we do the outgrower scheme, when we give them, we have our technical staff who will go around to move around to monitor them, to give them assistance. Like the vegetables, we are encouraging people to plant. We've been sending our technical team to go and tell them what to do. And we encourage farmers, if you have a land, you are confused on what to plant, they just come to us will know, will come, they do the soft testing for you and will let you know the type of product you plant there. Is there any place set aside, perhaps you could call that uh, government farm? Because I, I remember the one somewhere at uh, Ikorekan, you know, a back road area in Ikorekan. They used to call it a queer, you know, you set aside, they, they tried to the improve siblings and then after that they now said, okay, it's good for this, it's good for that. And then the 
we also know that um, government can also support uh, honey. I, I realize you are from any local government. Yeah, and, the food basket. Of and food basket, yes. <laughs> Viewer, she is from any local government, so if you don't have food, the food basket, the food basket the of our Bible, that is where almost all the rice meals are situated. And the rice farms are there. And the very few that comes around other parts, but in any local government. It's seen as a food, food basket. The people are predominantly farmers. And this is a good thing that, of course, for us to have the Commission of Fire Grip from that sector is not a mistake. Uh, Madam, I don't know if you, is there anything set aside, any farm, this is government farm, uh, this is for you to experiment, apart from the greenhouse, this is for us to experiment, this cassava, this cocoyam. I, I didn't make mention of cocoyam. I don't know if you're going to say something about that. Or... Yeah, uh, thank you. You know, having seed farms, we call, we call those type of farms demonstration farms. Okay. We have them in the ministry. Uh, as I said earlier, I believe in practical agriculture. The theory is important, but the practical people must see. So in the, in the ministry, the government also encouraged us as a ministry to have demonstration farms. For instance, if I want to show somebody how to plant cassava yes. or maize, the spacing and so on, I take the person mm -hmm. to the farm. Uh, that is why when we flagged up the second season planting in Ona last year, when the governor came to flag up, that place, that farm, is the government demonstration farm. Of course, we couldn't have done that in uh, anywhere outside the farm. And apart from that, Presently in the ministry, we've cultivated so many hectares of cassava that we take as demonstration farms. Sometimes we want to teach the farmers, we take them to that uh, farm so that whatever we want to demonstrate, they, we can show to them. That's why it is called demonstration farms. And we also have, apart from the vegetables we are having, we also have the cocoa farm, which we use as a model for farmers and so many crops. So it is very important. If I, 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 I want to show someone now how to cultivate maize, you know, I have to, I won't do it in the market. I have to take person, the person to, the, to farm. the farm. So we have all these farms. Okay. Uh, let's look at um, children. Today happened to be uh, 27th of May, which we're supposed to celebrate. We do march pass school by school. And uh, as a result of this uh, pandemic that is ravaging, the entire world. I don't think it's going to be possible. Any message to the children? Yeah, well, concerning the children's day for today, for this year, uh, as you've uh, likely said or rightly said, because of the pandemic, we cannot go to the stadium. But the children's parliaments are the mouthpiece of the children. And let me say that Akwa Ibum State is the number one state that has a standard children's parliament both at the state level and the local government areas level. We have them across the local government areas. But because of uh, this uh, COVID-19, we are marking this day with few children's parliaments, about 12 of them. After this, I'm meeting with them at the Women Development Center, because they are representing the children. Uh, they have to say what the government has done for the children and you know so many things maybe the dance and sing and so on just to mark the day because we cannot take it outside at the federal level we did uh, what we call a, a zoom uh, marking of the events whereby each state were given an activity to do like uh, maybe uh, a quite even states uh, we were asked to pick a child to pray for the leaders and other states. We also, you know, teach the children how to do these teleconferences. That's what we are doing at the national level. Each state will pick a representative to say something. But today, after this meeting, I'm going there to meet with the children. And I've told the children of Akwaibom states that after the sea, we will still celebrate. We are doing this to protect them. Not that the government does not love them. Government loves them. Governor Odori Manduel, our child-friendly governor, loves the children of Akwaipo so much. So after this year, we will still celebrate. So on behalf of the children, uh, the children's parliament will be there. So I want to congratulate all Akwaipo children for this day. Very beautiful day for Akwaipo children. And I know that God will continue to keep Akwaipo children to make them 
great men and women in future. Let me also uh, thank His Excellency the Governor for all what he has done for our even children. I want to thank Her Excellency the wife of the Governor for all the support he has given to this government and to the children of our people. You've worked with the governor, Mr. Dewey Manuel, for five years now. Yeah, my goodness. Is he a difficult person? Not at all. He's a, he's a god sent man. He's a disciplined man. He's a focused man. Above all, he fears God and acknowledges the supremacy of God. And if anybody has worked with Governor Odom Emmanuel without, you know, thanking God for him or being able to show commitment in whatever he or she is doing, then something is wrong somewhere. He's someone that if you work with him, you learn so many things. You learn to be focused, you learn to depend on God, you learn to be hardworking because he's very hardworking, he's very... He's very passionate about the people of Amwai So uh, he's a good man, he's a good boss. Okay, a very final one. This you must do. Yeah. Governor Dovi Manuel is marking one year in office, the second term. You are the dean of all the commissioners. And of course, um, just give a message on behalf of yourself and other commissioners and even your department it is very important. Look into the camera straight and talk to our Kwaibom people, home and abroad. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, by God's special grace, I've worked with Governor Odomi Mandel since 2015. Uh, if I say he's a good man, I can say it solidatively. So on behalf of uh, the College of Commissioners and Special Advisors, Akwaibom State as the Dean of Commissioners, and also on behalf of all the farmers in the state, as the only commissioner for agriculture and women affairs, uh, and of course on behalf of all the women of Akwaibum State, as the commissioner for women affairs and agriculture, and on behalf of all the children that we are celebrating today as their small mother, because the wife of the governor is the big mother, and also, on behalf of all persons with disabilities, because they are under us, the blind, the dumb, the physically handicapped, and those who were in leprosy hospital, on behalf of all of these people, I want to say happy celebration to our governor, the governor we are proud of, the governor who has made us proud, the governor who has made a quite say number one state in this country in all ramifications because when we talk of the things he has done, he has really made us proud. I want to say, Your Excellency, congratulations. May God continue to lead you higher and higher. And stay focused, irrespective of pe what people say, what people do. God is in charge of a quiet home state. The only God will see you through. And I want to congratulate all the women, all the men, all the children. God loves you. His Excellency the Governor loves you and I love you. Thank you. And keep fit, stay safe. Social distancing is very important. Wash your hands and of, of course where you can you don't have water, use your hand sanitizers. It must be alcoholic based. On behalf of everybody made this program a success. And of course, uh, my co-partner in this business, I'm talking about Solomon Ayo, the Honorable Commission of Information, who is supervising this production, and also the Chief Press Secretary, who is on the production as well. Uh, my name is Sam Snapper, and saying, keep our quiet and say, number one in your calendar, so that we can move this step forward. Thank you, and God bless you.